All right, I'm making this video because I keep seeing people have the same problems over and over again. Um, it's a pretty quick and easy fix, uh, so I figure I'll walk you through it real quick. This is mostly aimed towards the Terminator X ECUs. Um, one, because they only allow you to use a Bosch oxygen sensor and not an NTK, um, so that creates a lot of the problems. Um, but generally speaking, HP and Dominator ECUs uh, usually end up in the hands of people maybe with a little bit more experience. Um, and there's a lot of first timers and do-it-yourselfers with the Terminator X. All right, let's dive into the laptop. Um, this should only take a minute or two and uh, it'll save you a whole lot of headaches. So let's get started. All right, I'll just start off here by opening up a base calibration. Um, it doesn't matter what it is really. Um, now if we go to fuel and go to target air fuel. So this is basically, as I'm sure you're aware, the, the air fuel target that the ECU is trying to make. Um, this one kind of bounces around a little bit. Um, but what numbers you have in here is like irrelevant. Uh, let's just put a solid 14 out of so it's flat. Um, now if we go to our base fuel table, um, these are the values that you want. You want to make these values as close as you possibly can to where it maintains this air fuel ratio without the ECU having to do anything. Um, and that's where the closed loop and the learn feature um, make adjustments to these numbers to get to this target. Uh, which can be a very good thing, um, especially when you're, you know, you're first getting started, maybe the tune-up's out in the left field. Um, so that way you can at least drive it and get some data and, and make some changes. Um, a lot of people just rely on the learn feature to tune the car, and uh, I could go on and on why I don't agree with that, but that's for another video. Um, but ultimately what I want to show you here is once you get your base fuel table close and the tuning is quote unquote complete, um, I look how bad the scaling is on this file. Basically from here up is your boost table and then from here down is all uh, just cruising around. So I set that up a little differently. But anyways, um, so what we wanna do to prevent any situations is if we go here to closed loop and learn, you can see our closed loop is both adding and subtracting 50% of the fueling. And then, yeah, the same thing for the learn. So ultimately, one of the disadvantages of the, of the Terminator X versus the HP and the Dominator is you're stuck using a Bosch O2 sensor and not an NTK sensor. Um, the NTK sensors, in my experience, last a hundred times longer. And if you introduce uh, leaded race fuel into the mix, um, or maybe you positioned the oxygen sensor in the exhaust in a not ideal location, um, the NTK sensor now becomes a thousand times better uh, than the Bosch. So when your O2 sensors fail, um, it can do multiple different things, but generally what will happen is it will get stuck reading a certain value. So if it gets stuck, let's say you're targeting 14.0 air fuel and it gets stuck reading whatever, 10.0 air fuel. Um, now the ECU is gonna start trying to add all of this fuel in to make uh, to try and get to the target air fuel ratio. And then you also have the learn feature that's gonna be adding on top as well. Um, so basically you're gonna run into a situation where the car is gonna have so much fuel in it that it probably isn't gonna start. And if it does, it's just gonna run terribly. Um, terribly, I don't know if that's a word or not. Let's go with terrible, that sounds better. So what I would recommend doing is um, up to you if you even want to use this learn thing at all. Um, but ultimately, if you can highlight the whole thing, um, and let's just go with 5%, um, or uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll allow it to maybe on the closed loop, maybe allow it to add 10%. 
um, maybe in case you got a fuel pump issue or drop in some uh, fuel pressure. Um, and then you can, oops, then you can just allow it to drop, you know, pull 5% out. Um, and then you can, there's probably a faster way to do this. I change the way I do it all the time, but, um, and again, you have different ranges, um, and you can have different theories on this. Like maybe in boost, you want it to be able to add more fuel, pull less fuel out, um, but the big thing, like I said, so at least make sure you can get it home is you get into these vacuum portions of the map. Just change these values, both in the closed loop um, and the learn to something, something reasonable. Um, you should not be relying on the closed loop or the learn to, to run the car. Um, I see a lot of guys that are just like, you know, pour 85 in it and just let the closed loop and the learn handle the corrections. That's just not the right way to do it. You want to get all of your closed loop param um, closed loop and learning as close to zero as you can, which basically means that you're going to be dialing in this big, intimidating looking table. Um, and that way, the closed loop and the learn aren't working so hard because um, there is a delay in that stuff. Um, it will run around in circles. I've seen the closed loop and the learn kind of almost try and fight each other. Um, and uh, again, if an oxygen sensor fails, you're just going to become... Uh, you know, get yourself into a situation where your car might not even start anymore. You're going to foul spark plugs. Um, some of these cars changing plugs can be a, a real nightmare. Um, so the correct way to do it is just to tune this table completely. And again, you can use the closed loop and the learn if you want to use that stuff to dial this in. But once you do so, just come back into this closed loop and learn and then put some reasonable values in this. Um, so if your sensor fails and you're allowing it to add 5% on the closed loop and maybe another 5% on the learn, the car's still gonna run with a 10% correction. Um, but if you're 50% and 50%, uh, you know, the car might not run again. Um, so if you're familiar with tuning, you've been around this stuff for a long time, you probably know this, um, but I see a lot of guys having the same problems over and over again where my car ran fine yesterday, today it runs like garbage, um, and my O2 sensor isn't reading correctly, like what do I do? Um, so again, once you tune the primary tables, then you can bring this stuff back down to a reasonable value. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Um, if you like watching tutorial stuff like this and cars on the dyno, a um, bunch of problem solving and troubleshooting, um, make sure you subscribe. Um, we have more cars on the dyno than I can keep up with the videos of, so I just typically try to do the ones that are going to be a little more interesting. Um, so anyways, uh, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you again.